بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين The topic inshallah related to the stance of the salaf the stance of the muslims toward the rulers this topic is very important because we have rulers nowadays and as salaf al-salih the first muslim generation and the second muslim generation and the third muslim generation in the three first in the first three centuries used to have rulers as well so we need to know what the stance of the muslims in the past the stance in them of the muslims in the time of the khilafa rashida at the time of the rightly guided caliphate and in the time of the umayyad caliphate khilafa al-amawiyya and in the time and the era of the Abbasid Caliphate Al-Khilaf Al-Abbasiyya so even the time of the Ottomani Caliphate Al-Khilaf Al-Uthmaniyya how the Muslims and the scholars how was the relationship between the Muslims and their scholars with those rulers at that time <coughs> and then the Khilafah destroyed in 1924 or maybe before that and suddenly we have been replaced by pan-islamic state we used to be pan-islamic state called the khilafah we have been divided and fragmented to 55 countries 55 small states around the world with 55 leader not fifth one caliph and the caliph got assistance and we call them rulers no Today we have 55 or 57 leaders, all of them rule over portions of the Muslim land, rule over the Muslims in different time, in different place, whether in Middle East, all the way to India subcontinent, all the way to the Caucasian area, or to the East Europe, all the way to Central Asia, and even to Africa, and you will find yourself, there is more than 58 or 59 nowadays, leaders claim to be, or have leadership and authorities over the land and the life and the wealth of the Muslims in that area. So, what would stand? In the Kitab al-Aqeel al-Tahawiyya, for Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi, rahimahullah, he put it clearly chapter, the stand of the Muslims toward the rulers who rule by Islam. And he said, and I quote, وَلَا نَرَى السَّيْفَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِنْ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم. We do not see, we do not rise a sword against anybody from the Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. إِلَّا مَنْ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ السَّيْفُ Except the one which is obligatory upon us to rise a sword. وَلَا نَرَى الْخُرُوجَ عَلَىٰ أَئِمَّتِنَا وَأُولَاتِ أُمُورِنَا And we do not see that it's lawful to rise against our imams, against our rulers and leaders. وَإِنْ جَارُوا Even if they commit oppression or they did injustice. وَلَا نَدْعُوا عَلَيْهِمْ We do not make dua against them. وَلَا نَنْزِعُوا يَدًا مِنْ طَاعَتِهِمْ And we will never ever disobey them. وَنَرَى طَاعَتَهُمْ مِنْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And we see that the, the, the obedience for them is part of our obedience to Allah. فَرِيدَةً This is obligatory upon us to obey them. مَا لَمْ يَأْمُرُ بِمَعْصِيَةٍ Unless they order us to do something, you see, haram. وَنَدْعُوا لَهُمْ بِالصَّلَاحِ وَالْمُعَافَاتِ And we always ask Allah to guide them and to protect them. This quotation in the book of Al-Aqeel Al-Tahawiyya, the chapter of not to rise against the rulers, <coughs> obviously, it's so clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to obey. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasool wa ul al-amri minkum. All believers obey Allah, obey the messenger, 
and those in charge amongst you. Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah, wa ulil amri minkum, al ulama wal umara, the scholars and the rulers. And in the Sahih, in Sahih Muslim, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ata'ani faqad ata'a Allah. Wa man asani faqad asa Allah. Whoever obey me, he obey Allah. Whoever disobey me, he disobey Allah. Wa man yuti' al-amir faqad ata'ani. Wa man ya'z al-amir faqad asani. Whoever obey the amir, he obey me. And whoever disobey the amir, he disobey me. That hadith so strong, that to obey the amir, to obey the one in charge over you, the caliph, the rulers, the ulil amr, the imam. Even in the hadith reported by Abi Dhar, رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن خليلي أوصاني أن أسمع وأطيع وإن كان عبدا حبشيا مجدع الأطراف he said uh, Abu Zar said my friends mean it said my close friend mean he's you know he talks about the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he told me to listen and to obey even if the one in charge is a slave from Abyssinia You'd have some mutilation in his, you know, parts. In Bukhari and Muslim, in the Hadith, على المرئي المسلم السمع والطاعة فيما أحب وكره. The Muslims must listen and obey whether, whether he like or dislike. إلا أن يؤمر بمعصية except if he been ordered to do something haram. فإن أمر بمعصية فلا سمع ولا طاعة. If he been ordered to do something haram, he, he should not he should not to listen and nor to obey. You see, there's many hadith like this, and there is on and on. You can find hadith of Awf ibn Malik, that the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خيار وأئمتكم الذين تحبونهم ويحبونكم The best imams amongst you, those who uh, you love them and they love you. وتصلون عليهم ويصلون عليكم And you always pray for them and they pray for you. وشرار أئمتكم الذين تبغضونهم ويبغضونكم and the most evil leaders among you. You see, it is those whom you hate them and they hate you. وَتَلْعَنُونَهُمْ وَيَلْعَنُونَكُمْ And you curse them and they curse you. فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا نُنَابِزْهُمْ بِالسَّيْفِ O Rasulullah, shouldn't we rise the sword against them? قَالَ لَا مَا أَقَامُ فِيكُمُ الصَّلَاةِ He said, no, you do not let the sword as long as they establish amongst you the salat. ألا من ولي من ولي عليه ألا من ولي عليه وال فراه يأتي شيئا من المعصية فليكره ما يأتي من معصية الله ولا ينزع عنا يدا من طاعة and whoever has rule over him and he see he do something you know disobedience to Allah he should hate that okay disobedience but he should not withdraw his hand from we see from the pledge he to obey him you can see the ayat and the Sunnah said obey the rulers and as long as they do not ask you to do something haram. Look what the ayah said. In chapter of An-Nisa. Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu, ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasul. Ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasul wa uli al-amri minkum. In this ayah, Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey Allah. Use the terms obey Allah. Mean the terms obedience has been used and وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ and the term obedience as well been used and obey the messenger but when he come to the rulers he said وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ he did not say obey all the amr by themselves no 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 he said Allah SWT says obey Allah and obey the messenger and the rulers amongst you he did not say and obey the rulers no because the rulers we can we are not going to obey them exclusively from our obedience to Allah and the messengers. So we obey them as long as they obey Allah and they obey the messengers. Therefore, we are obliged to obey the rulers who? Who obey Allah and the messengers even if they do oppression. Even if they do injustice. Because they obey Allah and the messengers and did something not just for me. I must obey them for the sake of Allah, even if they do oppression against me. Because the main maqasid al-deen, 
the man itself aim of the deen حفظ الدين مقاصد الشريعة the main مقصد of the sharia is to preserve and to protect the deen that is take over anything of you know other interest therefore when you rise against it by the sword while they obey Allah and the messengers even if they do some injustice will cause a lot of mischief and corruption against the deen because the deen of Allah is it will be prevailed at that time the deen of Allah at that time will be the highest and the supreme so when you rise against the rulers who implement Islam because he did injustice to you you will cause complete destructions for the Islamic State therefore you should reckon that is he and the تحتسب مالك وتحتسب حقق في الله عز وجل أو لله عز وجل so you need to reckon that even what happened to you from the injustice is for the sake of Allah I will accept to obey as long as they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implement his deen therefore we should have sabr and we should stand firm that even if the rulers implement Islam if the when we say rulers we mean the caliph and the ulat those who are rule the governors with him and Mu'awad al-Tafweed, Mu'awad al-Tanfiz, the assisting rulers, and the Amir al-Jihad, and the judges, the, those who the Caliph appoint them, whether the Amir of the war, and even, or the head of the army, if you like, and the judiciaries, and the judges, etc., etc. So this is really called rulers. You see, the rulers are Caliph, and those he appoint them to be assistings, assistings for him. It's not allowed in Islam to have two leaders implement Islam. The hadith said, إِذَا بُوِّ عَلِي خَلِيفَتَيْنِ فَقْتُلُ الْآخَرَ مِنْهُمَا If you have two caliph came forward and you give them pledge, kill the later among them. So it's not allowed for the ummah to have two leaders. It's not allowed for the Muslims to have two leaders at the same time. That's why Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله تعالى عنه He stated clearly, it's not lawful for the Muslims to have two imams at the same time. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the hadith al-Mawquf reported in Sahih al-Sahabi state clearly that is not lawful for the Muslim ummah to have two imams at the same time. La yahillu al-Muslimina an yakuna lahum imamayni la mujtami'ani wa la muftariqan. Whether they are together or they are separated is not allowed. So always Ummah must have one Imam because the Imam is a symbol of unity of the whole Muslim Ummah. That is the Imam, is the Caliph. So the Caliph, he appoints Al-Ummal, Wal-Wulat, you see, wal muawinun all this, appoint all these, you know, uh, people and authorities, those called Ulil Amri, whether they are rulers or they are scholars, and they see, and this is why, when we, Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah, mean obey Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has name, has attribute, has word, it's called Al-Quran, and mention the Quran, his name, his attributes. Wa ati'u al-Rasul, and that is the sunnah, you see the sayings and the action and the consent of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they said, wa ulil amri minkum, and those who is in authority amongst you. Then the ayah said, if you dispute in any matter, whom are we going to dispute with Allah and the messengers? No way. We become kafir. Let these people, you see, we can be, they, you know, be careful from differ with the command of Allah or from the command of the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu That's why the ayah said, if you dispute in any matter between you and all the amr and the rulers فردوه إلى الله والرسول return back to Allah and the messengers return back to Quran and the Sunnah that is really the cornerstone of the whole issues therefore we obey them as long as they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will never rise against them as long as they establish the deen and establish the salat and they did not declare any kufr and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform us in many ayat that if we have rulers are corrupted 
is because of what? Because of what we are really committed. Today, the situation is different. Today, the situation is different. Today, we have really rulers who implement kufu law. Who implement kufu law. We are not talking about Al-Hajjaj who was in his time implement Islam. We are not talking about Al-Mansur who was in his time implement Islam. In the time of the uh, the Umayyad, Bani Umayyah, the uh, Umayyad Caliphate, and even the Abbasid Caliphate, who are received Banu Abbas, Al Khilaf Al Abbasiyya, the rulers at that time implement Islam. They were not communists, they were not Marxists, they were not capitalists, they were not Basis, they were not people implement democracy and freedom. The rulers at that time implement Islam. But they was doing some injustice and doing some some error and mistake there, which does not take them out of the fold of Islam. That why in the Hadith said, "Ati'hu walau akhda malak wajal zahrak." Obey the Caliph, even if he lash your back and take your wealth. So the question, because the unity of the Muslim Ummah and the ruling by Islam, al-hukm bima anzal Allah, it is take priorities over the. You see, the personal interest and the personal benefit. This is why when the time of Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas and Bani Uthman, in the time of the Khilafah, when it was some injustice and some oppression, that because what the people committed, Allah said, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ What happened to you from any calamities because what you commit by your hands, when people do action is bad, Allah will send, or will send upon them, you see the calamities. That's why Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ يُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Indeed, we put in charge some of the oppressors over those who are, are doing oppression because of what they are doing. Who the one who established the, the corruptions and the mischief in the earth? The corruption manifested in sea and land by what the people made, what the people did by their own hands. They make law and orders or they start to commit prohibition, they commit, you know, something, you know, haram and so on. Therefore, if we are speaking about the Salaf in relation to the rulers, that they do not rise against the rulers. Islam forbid us to rise against the rulers who implement Islam. Forbid us to rise the sword against anybody implementing Islam. Unless we see Kufr Bawah in the hadith said, Illa an taraw kufran bawahan lakum fihi min Allahi burhan. You see, we never rise until we see clear Kufr, which you have evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Then we rise against those rulers. Nowadays, we are not speaking about that situation. Situation at that time, in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the time of the Islamic State throughout the 13 years of implementation, the 1300 years, 1300 years of ruling by Islam, you see the state which established by the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca, in Medina, spread its authorities all over and expand its authorities in the time of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een and those who come after until 1300 years of ruling by Islam. Yes, Islam is so perfect in its, in, 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 uh, on its applications, but when it comes you see, to the implementation is subjective to the uh, characters of the people and the rulers, is subjective of the behavior, sub subjective to the issues of the, uh, 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 the sincerity of those who implement it. Therefore, the error is going to be, and the mistake by those who implement it, not by Islam. Islam as an application is no doubt, it is really is the word of Allah, is the deen of Allah, it is really the perfect today I completed to you your deen. You see, I perfect your deen. Allah says, He did my ni'mah upon you, 
that is the biggest ni'ma, the biggest, the biggest blessing is al-Islam. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And I choose for you and accept for you al-Islam to have the deen, the deen what you believe in, and what you live by, and what you die on. That is the deen. You cannot call, you see, yourself a Muslims, unless you believe in Islam as a Tawheed, and you live by Islam as a Sharia, and you die on Islam in da'wah and jihad for the sake of Allah. That is the Muslims. But to believe in Islam and live by capitalism, you are just completely you're deceiving yourself. You see, that is the mistake of many people. When we speak about how we deal with the existing rulers, you will find immediately people rise and say to you, Ittaqillah ya shaykh. Ittaqillah ya shaykh. We are following Nahjus Salaf. We do not rise against rulers. We do not rise against leaders. That is the way the ulama of the Salaf said. Indeed, ulama of the Salaf said so. Indeed, we do not rise against any rulers implement Islam. Indeed, we do not rise against any leaders implement Islam. Indeed, we do not rise against any of those in charge, in authority over Muslims who are implementing Islam, even if they did injustice. Unless we see kufr, unless we see clear-cut kufr implementation. Therefore, we can find people say to you now, uh, there's people say to you now, that is, ya akhi, wait, wait, you see, that is great scholars say to you, the rulers who does not rule by Quran and Sunnah, we are obliged to obey him as long as really not, as long as is not going to be and disobedience to all the messengers. And they say to you, you should not fight him. And Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen, it was clearly what he said, and that is الحاكم الذي لا يحكم بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله تجب طاعته في غير معصية الله ورسوله ولا تجب محاربته من أجل ذلك بل ولا تجوز إلا أن يصل إلى حد الكفر فحينئذ تجب منابذته وليس له طاعة المسلمين in the مجموع الفتاوى of شيخ محمد بن صالح العثيمين in the volume 2 page 147 stated clearly the rulers who does not rule by the Quran and the Sunnah mean in a particular issues. We are obliged to obey him in any matter unless it's disobedience to Allah and the messengers. And we are not allowed to fight. He said, fight him because of that. But, but moreover, he said, is not allowed you to fight him unless he reach level of kufr. At that time we should rise a sword and he has no obedience. You see, and he has no obedience in the neck of the Muslims, you know, and they should rise against him. Even Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, he said, if the rulers implement Islam, does not reach the kufr, even if he did some injustice in some area, we should really obey him, you see, and do not fight against him unless we see kufr. Now, we want to apply these terms. We agreed with the Sheikh in these issues. For argument's sake, we agreed on all what they said in relation we should not rise against the rulers today unless we see kufr. And we heard that from a lot of the scholars, whether in Bilad al Haramain, whether in Arabia, whether in Middle East and Far East, they said if the ruler implement Islam and does not reach the kufr, you see, we should not rise the sword against him. But if he reached the kufr, implement kufr, we should rise the sword. Agreed upon? We agree. Now let us question ourselves a little bit. Question, this is, you know, ourselves a little bit. We learn from many of the ulama of the Salaf about nawaqid al-Islam, about what make a Muslim, what make a Muslim kafir. I mean, what, not what be, what, what the things, if the Muslim committed, he become apostate. You see, that's called the negations of the deen. And Nawaqid al-Islam, the negations of Islam, it is we known now, is combined by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, in the Nawaqid al-Islam al-Ashara, the ten negations of the deen. And the first one is clearly state, Man shakka fi kufri al-Yahud aw al-Nasara, whoever doubt that the Christian or the Jews are kafir. Okay? Or 
say their own deen like our deen that he become kafir. The existing rulers, most of them, ruled today by the by the constitutions and the law and the order of the Jews and the Christian and they live the Sharia. So they do not implement the Sharia. Therefore, you can find the Fuqaha declared takfir in those rulers. So there is no doubt that those rulers who rule by the Kufr, it has been declared they are Kafirs. But unfortunately, suddenly, after new world order, <coughs> and then after the issues of war against terrorism, we start to hear now that the existing rulers, all of them, are Muslims. No one of them ruled by Kufr at all. And hardly you can hear anyone now say to you that there is any single rulers in Muslim land or over the Muslims are kafir. All of them Muslims. Subhanallah. All of them. Even though they implement kufr law. Even though they kill the da'is and the scholars and violate their own sanctities and violate their own honors and then put them in prison even though they are launched with the kuffar against Muslims, they are launched with the Jews and the Christians and the Americans and the British forces in the war against Muslims in Afghanistan and in Iraq and in Chechnya and we see them how they support the, the so-called Western power in the war against the Muslims. There's the majority of the rulers today they make istihlal for all the riba, all the usury because the usury system is part of the international banking system. Therefore, a riba, it is part of the Kanunil Bank Dawli, is part of the international banking system, which all the rulers abide with, and they make it law and order, mean they codify it. They codify the riba and make it law and order, organize it, and they start to even account people for it, the existing rulers. The one who torture and prison any da'is, any alim. You see, that is existing rulers. Even existing rulers, some of them, they prevent Muslims from performing the salat. They even arresting Muslims if they have a beard. They even following Muslims as they call for tawheed. The existing rulers, some of them, they take a tawheed from the mujahideen the Muslims and handed them to the Kuffar and the Jews and the Christians to kill them or to torture them or to prison them and that what happened when the Muslims has been given to the American in order to take him to Guantanamo and we see what happened to them the existing you know, rulers they permit the fornications and the, and the adulteries they codified the zina the zina in many Muslims country is law and order mean Every lady who commit herself, you see, in what so-called prostitutions, those, you see, that prostitutions and that really prostitute, if you like, all this is codified as a matter of law and order. Those ladies who are involving in that, or those men who are involving in that, they call them the pimp, the pimp and whatever. Those people have a permit and license from the existing government in the many Muslims country. So you can find the nightclubs and all those casinos has been opened according to application form and license. Sometimes their own certificate and their own license is bigger than the certificate and the license of many of the people who got PhDs because she want to have a license from the health service that she is really healthy and she is free from any disease and she was a license from the tourist ministry so the tourist ministry 
and the health ministry, you see, and as well the educational ministry to make sure that this lady in the casino or the nightclubs, she is really providing good service for entertainment for the people, healthy and to be as well, you see, uh, um, uh, value for monies and not to be really just wasting the money. So even the adulteries and the fornication and the pornography, all this is codified as a law and order in the Muslim countries as something permissible. And not to mention the alcohol in many Muslim countries, the sharab in Pakistan is available in many itself really of their own what? Of their own hotels and their own big companies. And the same thing available everywhere in all Bilal Sham, all the way from Palestine to Lebanon to Jordan to Syria and go to Iraq and then to Tunisia and North Africa and Algeria and Morocco and even in Arabia. You see in Emirat, in Bahrain, in Abu Dhabi, in Shariga, in Oman, alcohol everywhere and nightclub everywhere, even in Bilad al Haramain. We start to see here, we see many of those signs in certain area in Aramco, in the, in the Dammam area or in the Mantifa Sharqiyya, in the Eastern area of Saudi Arabia today. You can see that is available. So the we, we existing rulers today, they do not kill the one who murdered intentionally. They do not execute him, nor they cut the hand of anybody who steal, nor they stone to death any, any person who is commit fornications or adultery and he's married. I see, and nor they ask the one who is become apostate to repent. The existing rulers, they dismantle completely the obligations of jihad for the sake of Allah. And instead to prepare the army to expand the Islamic authorities and carry the da'wah all over the world, the existing rulers, they killing the Muslims and the ulama and the mujahideen and put them in a prison. And the existing rulers, even in some countries like Tunisia and like Morocco, even you see in many other countries like Turkey, they stopping itself women from wearing the hijab, wearing the niqab, wearing the khimar, wearing the jilbab. Even they start to look down for any woman if she cover herself. The existing rulers encourage, you see, the tabarruj, dazzling the people, does it themselves in the public arena from those women, encourage them to go and start to involve in free mixings and involve in singing, involve in many muharramat existing rulers. They preventing Muslims from supporting you know, each other, from supporting those in a crisis in Chechnya or in Afghanistan or in Iraq or in Palestine or in Kashmir or in Burma or in any part you see of the world. In Turkestan, Sharqiyya, they need help and Muslims cannot even send money there or help the existing rulers, they kill any Muslim who attempt to enter to Iraq and arresting any Muslims who attempt to enter to Iraq or to Palestine or to Afghanistan via the border, they will arrest him and give him to America and even as well, you know, you know they torture him. The existing rulers, they permit for the Jews and the Christians and the Hindus to build, you know, churches and to build, to build synagogue and to build their own places and of the kufr worship, the existing rulers, they permit the army of the kuffar from the Jews and the Christian and the Hindus who take the billions of billions of the wealth of the Muslims and they put it in their own accounts, in private accounts in Europe and the West and they leave it there for their own desires and they spreading the facade and the mischief in the earth and where the majority of the Muslims are really starving and they are some of them even dying, you see, from starvations, existing rulers, they're rejecting the Quran and the Sunnah. They're rejecting the Quran and the Sunnah and they're mocking Allah Deen and they're mocking a Hadith and somebody will say, not all of them, that the existing rulers, they declared they are, you can see, they declared they are secular regimes, and we see what happened with Urgadan and the other existing rulers, they're putting pressure on the ulama and the du'at and the scholars, those who want to forbid the evils, and they themselves, 
who support the people of the Fasad and the Machif, the existing rulers, support the people of the Machif and the Fasad and the corruption, and instead to support the ulama, and you know, let them spread their own poison via the Western, via the media, to mislead the Muslims and take them away from the manhaj of Tawheed. Some of the existing rulers publicly declare that they are friends of the Jews and the Christians, and they declare they love the Christians in the time where all those Christians, whether being British or being American or European or Western or even Asian, you can find them all they putting the ulama and the da'i and the Muslims in prison. Existing rulers violate the sanctity of the Muslims. Even some of them involving in sending their own army to arresting men and women and rape women in their own prisons and in their own palaces. The existing rulers, not only they left the prayer and the fasting, and not only they, they, they don't pay zakat and they drink alcohol and they fornicate and they steal and they waste the Muslim wealth, the existing rulers aligns with the kuffar against the Muslims. What is left after that to call them, you see, kafir? The existing rulers today, they are either in Muslims' country, either Christians like the leaders in Lebanon, or Ba'sis like the leaders of, you know, of Iraq, or people, Arab nationalistic, you see, like the people who are in Egypt, or seculars like most of the Arab countries, or even people who are nationalistic, like see, and secular like in India, subcontinent and Pakistan, or Rafidis who are following the Rafidi, the Shiism, like in Iraq and in Iran, or communist, the existing of the rulers today, they are really helping the corruptions, helping the mischief, helping all the prostitution to come to Muslims' country under the pretext of tourism. The existing rulers, some of them even hanging the cross in their own chest and attending all the Christians' prayers in their own churches and they go to the synagogue and participate and celebrate with them their own Eid and they even we can see them how they elevate the kuffar and respect them and do not give the same respect to the Muslims nor to the ulama of the Muslims. My dear Muslim brothers, existing rulers, they permit all the Western curriculums and they make it law and order and they force it upon the Muslims to teach their own children from that itself curriculum and manahij of education you know, based on communism or capitalism or secularism. That is really what we see the existing rulers. They start to say, we and the Jews and the Christians are brothers and we are sons of the same deen and we are one Millah, Millat Ibrahim and they are liars. Millat Ibrahim is Millat Tawheed, is not the Millah of Shirk and Kufr. Existing rulers, you can see them, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters, what they are doing everywhere. You see, in different parts of the world, after all this, after all this, and you can go on and on, you want to tell me, existing rulers implement Islam, subhanallah, they permit all the corruptions, even the black magic is become public practice, even those who are homosexuals, it's become really legally present in many of the so-called Muslims country, even the ideas of gambling, you see, is become way of life, the gambling in the public places. Even we can see they go to black magic and permit those who are dealing with magic to come on national televisions and start to speak on national TV. My dear Muslim brothers, the existing, the existing rulers, in fact, they are mocking Islam and the Muslims. And after all this, anybody called those rulers are kafir, you can find he will be already be put in prison. Takfiris. Why? They said, you know, you takfiris, you don't see those rulers I pray in the public televisions, in the Eid of Futra, Eid of Adha. You don't see them. They establish charity organizations and they publish Quran all over the world. You don't see them, they make a lot of, of breaking fasting in Ramadan and make all the food and give all this and distribute it around the world. You don't see them, they're speaking all the time in their own summit, 
one of the Arab summit <coughs> or about, about the issue of Palestine. So people said to you, you takfiris, you people do not listen. You people do not listen to the truth. Subhanallah. <coughs> this is really quite serious. Because all the Nawaqid al-Islam, which is mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, those who are with the Kuffar and the Mushrikeen and help them against Muslims, that is what? That is become Kafir. Who is the one who involved in magic or claimed to be a certain, he can change, he see the reality, he is a Kafir. The one who is ruled by Kufr is a Kafir. You see, of the, of the, all this, we can find, you see, they not even listen to Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, those people claim to be the rulers and the leaders in Arabia. Sheikh Hamad bin Ali bin Atiq, Hamad bin Ali bin Atiq al Najdi, he said, you see, that from Nawakhid al Islam, from what negate even your deen and you become apostate, Al Julusu Ma'al Mushrikina fi Majalis Shirkihim min Ghadi Inkar. To sit with the Mushriks in their own circle of Shirk without to reject their own Munkar or reject them. And even he said, in the Minnawaq of Islam, the Hur al Karaha, Wal Ghadab in the Dawati ila Allah, what Tilawati Kitabihi, where in the Abim of Nahal Munkar, he said, What is negate the Islam if you know whenever you carry da'wah or recite the Quran and they commit good or forbid evil. If any of the rulers show any hatred to all that or become from the da'wah or become angry from commit good forbid evil, that sign of what? Of negations of Islam. Sign of apostasy. Sheikh Hamad bin Ali, rahimahullah, he said, anybody who rejecting the da'wah, rejecting commanding good forbidding evil, or hate people to command good forbid evil, he is, you know, become what? He become kafir. Subhanallah. That is in the book, Majmu'at al-Tawheed. You see, you can read it all clearly. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he stated clearly, مَنْ جَعَلَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ يَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَيَسْأَلُهُمْ كَفَرَ إِجْمَاعًا The one who put between him and Allah, middle, people, you see, to intercede via them to Allah, rely on them and ask them help, he is a kafir. And he said, that is from the Nawaqid al-Islam. And now as they, what we see, we can see now, a lot of people are start to rely on the kuffar and even stand with them against Muslims. Even some people start to intercede by by men and by graves and by people who are dead people. And we can see those people have been declared to be Muslims and you cannot even speak any word against them. Anyway, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters, we stated clearly in the beginning that the manhaj of Salaf is not to rise against the rulers. You see, even if they do operation as long as they implement Islam and no kufr law has prevailed. Yet, People try to apply that to the existing rulers who implement kufr and the kufr prevail all over. Even at that time, one kufr law to prevail was enough to rise against him. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he fought the people for one hukum, for people did not pay zakat. And he said, we do not differentiate between salat and the zakat. You see, tariku salati kafir, wa mani'u zakati kafir. So he said, the one who does not pray, is he committing kufr? And the one who does not pay zakat, you see, all he rejects to pay zakat, he is committing kufr and fight against it. Therefore, when we are talking about the existing rulers, we are talking about people who betray Allah and the messengers and the Muslims and rejecting to implement the Sharia. <coughs> all those who claim to implement the Sharia, but they accompany or they <coughs> they share with the ruling of the Sharia kufr laws, whether they bring constitutions or resolutions for United Nations, and are betrayed to the international court, what called Court of Justice. Those 
partners who are really helping the kuffar, the Americans and the British and the Western countries in the so-called war against terrorism, in the war, the crusade war against Islam and Muslims, and give them all the facilities in their own land, in their own even SFC, in every single self, you know, atmosphere or every single sphere, if you like, of the Muslim land. Give them all the information they need in order to kill and to arrest Muslims. That is the existing rulers. Therefore, supporting the kuffar against Muslims, Sheikh al-Hawali, Sheikh Safa al-Hawali, he has famous saying that support the kuffar against Muslims by any form of support or any form of, of, of assistance. Even by word, it is kufr bawah. Wa nifaqun surah. You see, and wa fa'iluha murtaqib bin aqib bin awaqib al-Islam. That his quotation, he said, anyone, I quote Sheikh Safa al-Hawali, even if we may differ with some of those scholars, the way I quote Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen in the beginning, though even if I differ with him in something, but he's correctly said, we should not rise against the rulers who, who are really implementing Islam, even if they do injustice, and see we see kufr. But that is really statement, if you apply it to the reality, you find the existing rulers implement kufr. Implementing kufr in many itself of the issues, not only one kufr, is many kufr laws prevail. Sheikh Safa al-Hawali said, إن نصرة الكفار على المسلمين بأي نوع من أنواع النصرة أو المعاونة ولو كانت بالكلام المجرد هي كفر بواح ونفاق صلاح وفاعلها مرتكب ناقض من نواقض الإسلام He said, any form of assisting for the kuffar against the Muslims even by word, it is explicit kufr and explicit, you know, hypocrisy, and the one who committed, he commit what negate the deen, he commit apostasy. <coughs> and if we look to the ulama, even Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Sheikh, he was declaring, is one of the kufr al-akbar, إِنَّ مِنَ الْكُفْرِ الْأَكْبَرِ الْمُسْتَبِينَ تَنْزِيلَ الْقَانُونُ اللَّعِينَ مَنْزِلَتْ مَا نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحِ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَلْبِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍّ مُبِينٍ فِي الْحُكْمِ بَيْنَ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالرَّدِّ عَلَيْهِ عِنْدَ تَنَازُعِ الْمُتَنَازِعِينَ مُنَاقَضَةٌ وَمُعَازٌ لِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا State clearly that one of the biggest kufr the one who make the man-made law have the same stance of what Jibreel alayhi salam sent from Allah to the heart of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You see, with the clear, it's a warning to rule between the people and to refer back in any dispute to Quran and Sunnah. And he quote the ayah. And we know very well, today, the man-made systems everywhere. The Sharia law are not exist. And if there is some Sharia courts, in some of the so-called Muslim country, only to, miss, to deal with the issue of marriage and nikah and divorce, even that has been affected by the French constitutions, American one, British one. So some area you can find, like in Arabia, they implement some Sharia laws, and then the allies with the kuffar against Muslims. In other countries, you can find that they implement kuffar law, all right, and rise the kuffar against Muslims, therefore, the kuffar law everywhere. And somebody would say to you, Akhi, why you are so offensive toward the rulers? Akhi, you don't see them, they publish books of Islam. You don't see them, they distributed Quran everywhere. You don't see them defending the ulama of the haqq in order to spend their own books in different color, in different language, and spend the da'wah all over Europe. You don't see them, they build big mosques, Akhi. He don't see them, they pray publicly in front of us and we judge people by the public. We don't see them that they're helping a lot of needy people in Palestine. Look what happened, King Abdullah. One billion he give and then he give 12 billion dollars, you see, for the people of Palestine and Gaza. What talking about? How much you give yourself? You don't see them, they are really helping. You see, a lot of those people are needy. Subhanallah. And we know those people, if to answer them, we can call for them Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. He said, 
من لم يحق بما أنزل الله استخفافا به أو احتقانا له أو اعتقادا أن غيره أصلح منه وأنفع للخلق فهو كافر كفرا مخرجا من الملة He said the one who does not rule but ever Allah revealed looking, looking for, the, for what Allah revealed down okay or does not even think is good or he thinks something else is better and more benefit for the people whoever do that he's kafir kufr akbar take out of all of Islam and he said ومن هؤلاء من يضعون للناس تشريعات تخالف التشريعات الإسلامية and among those who are kafir that Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen said those who legislate to the people some legislation to contradict to the Sharia to be for them what? to be for them minhaj and way for people to follow and they think and he said فَإِنَّهُمْ he said فَإِنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَضَعُوا تِلْكَ الْتَشْرِعَاتِ إِلَّا هُمْ يَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّهَا أَصْلَحْ وَأَنْفَعَ الْخَلْقِ he said فَإِنَّهُمْ those did not put down did not legislate did not lay down those legislations تِلْكَ التَشْرِعَاتِ الْمُخَالِفَ لِلْشَرِيعَةِ الْإِسْلَامِيَةِ which is contradict to the Sharia of Islam except they are believing is better and it's really more benefit for the people إِلَّا وَهُمْ يَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّهَا أَصْلَحْ وَأَنْفَعَ لِلْخَلْقِ and he said what known by necessity rationally and even part of the fitra إِذَنَ الْمَعْلُومَ بِالضَّرُورَ الْعَقْلِيَّ وَالْجِبِلَّةُ الْفِطْرِيَّ أن الإنسان لا يعدل عن منهاج إلى منهاج يخالفه إلا وهو يعتقد فضل ما عدل إليه ونقص ما عدل عنه أو ما عدل عنه. He said the person, he said one known rationally that the person will never leave منهج to other منهج except to live in his منهج to other منهج contradict to except he think the one he really he 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 follow is better than the one he left. And this is really the book Fatawa and the message or Rasail of Sheikh Muhammad bin Uthaymeen bin Salih al-Uthaymeen uh, volume 2 uh, page 134 Therefore we need ourselves to refer back to Quran and Sunnah in Sahih al-Bukhari Ubad al-Musamit radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said Da'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The messenger of Allah call us and invite us <coughs> we give him bay'ah to listen to obey in ease and hardship and what we like and dislike and not to rise against the rulers unless we see we don't want to unless you see clear kufr you have evidence from that from Allah therefore people say to you Listen to the first part of the hadith. We listen and we obey. ما يعنى على السماء والطاعة في مرشتنا ومكرهنا وسير وسير ووو وسيرنا. Okay, is to obey him. We see in everything in here in in ease and hardship, and not to rise against the rulers. Okay, that is part said to you. Listen and obey. But they read the second part. إلا أن ترى كفرا بواحا. Except if you see clear kufr. So do I they take part and leave part? I don't understand. And the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned in Sayyid Tirmizi إِنَّ النَّاسَ إِذَا رَعَوُ الظَّالِمْ فَلَمْ يَأْخُذُوا عَلَى يَدَيْهِ أُوشِكَ أَنْ يُعَمُّهُ أَنْ يَعْمُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِحِقَابٍ مِنْهُ Sorry. If people see the oppressors and do not stop him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon them punishment from him, from him. So now we can say it, okay, no problem. Okay, those who just do oppression, as long as they implement Islam, we will never rise against him. But if you start to obey them and listen to them and follow their own path, in the day of judgment, what are you going to say to Allah? When Allah says in Shabbat al Ahzab, verse 66 and 67, يوم تقلب وجوههم في النار يقولون يا ليتنا أطعنا الله وأطعنا الرسول وقالوا ربنا إن أطعنا ساداتنا وكبراءنا فأضلون السبيل. On the day of judgment, their own face will be in her fire, turnings, and they will say it. 
We wish we obey Allah. We wish we obey the messengers. Oh Allah, we obeyed our rulers and our leaders and they take us misguided. They get us astray. Therefore, the ayah said you go to hell. Five people said to you, I take it easy. They will take it easy. Why you are really so harsh against the kuffar? Is all the question going to be? Are you going to be in hellfire? So you're going to be in hellfire. So you don't need to make takfir for the rulers. Okay? Leave them. And subhanallah, the existing rulers are the people whom we describe them, you see clearly what they are. For example, this one thing said to you, Akhi, the existing rulers, especially the rulers in Arabia, because some people agree with you about Mubarak, about Asad, about this, but the existing rulers in Arabia, ya akhi, ya akhi, ya akhi, okay? You need yourself to think. The existing rulers oh, cannot do anything. They have the duress and the fear. They have been forced to rule by certain things which is really not part of the chapter in this one. That, that is our speaking about it, Al-Ahzab. 67 and 66. Okay. So people say to you, existing rulers, Akhi, what they do, it's, it is something out of duress. It's not something really which is uh, there's something they like, okay? It's out of fear, they have done, they can't do anything. Even some people they will say to you, okay? Uh, they will say to you, yeah, he, even the Najashi, he was a Muslim, he did not make the Quran the main articles of legislation for him, the main source of legislation in his own kingdom because he cannot do it because the people they will never accept it. So out of fear, okay, the king, he did not do so. And that is why he did not implement the Sharia. He was weak. And some people say to you, Akhi, Yusuf alayhi salam, rule Egypt, you see, by the Sharia of the previous rulers, did not change the rules. So how we can today start, you see, uh, to expect the rulers to do so? The day of the rulers are really under the duress because of the American government. So they cannot, they are so weak. They cannot rule by the Sharia exclusively. Okay? And they say to you, we agree with you, that some of the laws is, is part of the Sharia, some of the law is not part of the Sharia. We agree with you to Allah with the kuffar against Muslims. It is wrong. They say to you, it's wrong. Don't say it's kuffar akbar the way they put 10 of the negation of Islam. It's wrong. But they can't do anything. And Allah says, Allah Obey Allah as much as you can. And they start to speak with you about the duress issues, and there is ikrah, there is this and that. Obviously, you see the one who says this type of things, usually what he said to you, Najashi, he was Muslim and ruled by Kufr. And we know this very well. And Najashi, when he declared Islam and agreed, on what the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you see he came with he died straight away after that he wasn't even living for even a month you people speak about the Najashi as if he accepts Islam from the first day the Najashi was two one in the first era the first Najashi he died really uh, on the year six before the Hijrah. And the second Najashi, Najashi is the, is the title of the head of the people of Abyssinia. So there were two Najashi. The first one died Christians, and he was doing justice to Muslims, those who make Hijrah to him, who migrate to him. But the second Najashi, you see the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam sent him, invited to Islam, and he embraced Islam, and he died after about a month. This is very important. And we should know as well, my dear Muslim brothers, it happened that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to his companions in his deathbed, okay, he said, you know, all, you see, the, the Prophet said to the Sahaba, that is, that is the Jashashi, okay, said to the companion, mean to the Sahabi who came, 
okay, he was present in his deathbed, he said to him that he embraced Islam. So he said to him for the first time, he embraced Islam, and that in his own deathbed, and that Sahabi went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All right? And yet when he said that, that the Najashi, the king of Abyssinia, to the Sahabi in his deathbed, was in the presence of all the people who are really the head of the countries, and none of them, you see, or all of them was present, and he did not bother about any one of them. So he was doing what he knows, and he never reached him, okay, the Sharia. And the Sharia of Islam was not completed. So he died before the Sharia of Islam has been completed. And he did as much as he can within that short period, all right, until he met his Lord. Therefore, to say it, he left the Sharia. The Sharia was not legislated yet at that time. Both of the Islamic rules did not legislate. And to say it now, he left the Sharia, and the Sharia was there, and he ruled by the Ta'ud or by the Kufr. That's not the case. <coughs> or to claim, you see, that is, he was under duress from his own people, and that's why he consent for the kufr, that's rubbish. Why? Because it's clearly the Najashi, if he did not rule by Islam out of fear and rule by the kufr, if that's the case, he will hide. You see, he would hide that, you see, uh, that he was a Muslim. Rather, he said in his own deathbed. And more than that, he does not know about Islamic rules that much. And the Najashi, he was a person who was a Christian, so why do they want to rise against him? They are all of them Christians. And they did not see that he is a Muslim. And nobody knows he became Muslims except when he came in his deathbed. So the idea is to say, it, now let us follow the Najashi. We don't follow the Najashi, we follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet did not consent to Najashi on implementing anything else, because the Najashi was not a Muslim. So the question to say it, that Najashi was a Muslim and the Sharia was there and he did not, not rule with it, that's completely wrong analysis. As far as the issue of Yusuf Alayhi Salam, people start to say it, he left the Sharia of Allah and he ruled by the people before. Yeah, the ruler of whom? By the Sharia of whom? He's the one Allah said about his story. In al hukmu illa lillah, amara alla ta'budu illa iyyah. You see, shame upon those people who try to say Yusuf alayhi salam, he ruled by kufr. Or to say Yusuf alayhi salam, he agreed to share with the king two arbitral of Ta'ud or ruled by the kufr. It's not the case. You see, this is completely different. It was when known. You see that Yusuf alayhi salam, he ruled by whatever Allah revealed. And uh, because he did not accept in any way to return back to the king, rather he can return back to the Sharia of Yaqub alayhi salam. This is very important. And uh, therefore the tafkir of Yusuf alayhi salam was clearly ruling by the Sharia of Yaqub. So the question now to say it, that they are under duress and uh, they are the one who uh, fear from America, that is completely rubbish. They love the dunya and they hate and they do not really think about akhirah. That's why that is really what makes them the people, the existing rulers in chapter of Al-Nahl verse 107, Allah says, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ إِسْتَحَبُّ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى الْآخِرَةِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرِينَ That because they favor the worldly gain instead of the hereafter. And Allah will never guide those who are kafir. Therefore, those existing rulers, they have no excuse whatsoever on what they are doing. And if they say they are weak, give the power to the ulama of the haq and the rule by Islam and sit down. If you are really truthfully, you are weak. If they fear, you see from the kuffar, give the power to the Muslims and stop itself really being rulers and terrifying from the kuffar the way he claimed all the time. So there's completely no excuse for them. You're thinking Abdullah, really he has a fear from America 
So why not have the power to the ulama in Muslims, you know, and there's a lot of ulama can rule. Why put all those 26,000 alim and da'i and sharia students in prison? And we can see many people nowadays say to you, Akhi, just teach Tawheed and don't talk about the rulers. That is really what the mulji are going to do. They want the kufr law to prevail, and they want the kuffar be in charge of the Muslim land, and the kuffar, you see, uh, and the rulers allow the kuffar against Muslims and help them in their own plan, and their own plot against Muslims. And then he said, Akhi, and find excuse for those rulers, and said there are people who are really weak, who are really under duress, and we see many of those people, you see, who came out and said to you, Akhi, it's fitna, don't speak about it. The aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they do not accept rulers, if he declare kufr, to be imam for the Muslims. And that's why the statement is clearly among the ulama of the Salaf, that if the rulers who are ruled by Islam happen to him anything and he become kafir, he's no longer leaders and his duty upon the Muslims to rise against him and remove him and appoint a trustworthy imam. Okay? Chapter of An-Nahl 107 An-Nahl So Say between now why the existing rulers are kafir <coughs> The existing rulers are kafir simply If we assume that they implement the Sharia As they claim in some countries <coughs> They live state with Allah laws, what Allah does not permit. And that means they refer to more than one Lord, because the Lord is the one who legislates. The Lord is the one who legislates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al musharri And therefore, Al-Rabbu is al musharri The Lord is the one who legislates. And if you refer to somebody else for legislations, or you associate with Allah somebody else for his stations, you take another Lord. Yusuf السلام, he said clearly in verse 39, sorry, chapter Yusuf, verse 39, Allah says, أَأَرْبَابٌ مُتَفَرِّقُونَ خَيْرٌ أَمْ أَمِ الْأَمِ اللَّهُ أَمِ اللَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارُ Who is better? Lords who are completely different, better? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, الواحد الْقَهَارُ they are kafir because they obeying those who legislate law and order, whether locally or internationally, and follow their own sharia of the kufr, and follow their own kufr councils of United Nations and the security councils and the international community in their own alliance. Those who follow the sharia of United Nations and the, its own resolutions and its own articles and alliance with the kufar. Allah says in chapter of Ashura, verse 21, أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاء شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَأْذَنْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Do they have a partners whom this is paid for them matter of what they deen, what they must believe in and live by, which Allah does not give permission, which Allah does not this state. So they become careful, those rulers, simply because they reject to refer to Allah or they say we obey in some and we take from other in some. That's why some people, they may accept some of the Sharia rules but accept and combine that with another kufr rules or rejecting other Sharia. In chapter Muhammad verse 25 to 26, Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ ارْتَدُّوا عَلَىٰ أَتْبَارِهِمْ Those who commit apostasy and retract back from Islam. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ لَهُمْ الْهُدَىٰ After the revelation and the guidance has become clear to them, الشَّيْطَانُ سَوَّلَ لَهُمْ وَأَمْنَ لَهُمْ The shaytan, the one who mislead them and give them itself the false hope. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لِلَّذِينَ كَارِهُ مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ فَنُطِيعُكُمْ فِي بَعْضِ الْأَمْرِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِسْرَارَهُمْ because they say it for those people who hate some of what Allah has revealed, okay, or they hate what Allah has revealed, they we're going to obey you in some of the deen, some of what Allah has revealed, and Allah He knows what they hide. This ayah is so clear. We will obey you in part of the matter. You see, does not that mean they are really 
even the existing rulers are committing kufr because they rule and judge by different what Allah has revealed. And the ayah chapter of Al-Ma'idah verse 44, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Those who do not rule and judge whatever Allah revealed, they are the kafirs. And yet people say to you, that is this one riwayah, Abba ibn Abbas say, رضي الله تعالى عنه, is kufr do not kufr, even kufr do not kufr, they want you to accept it, subhanallah. As to accept kufr asghar is allowed. And that is the ayah is so clear. Yet in the chapter of An-Nisa, verse 65, Allah says, أعوذ بالله من شيطان الرجيم, فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حاجة مما قضيت ويسلم تسليما By your Lord they are not believers until they judged and they are to be arbitrated to you on whatever dispute whatever they face among them is among each other then they should not have any rejection any resembling in their own hearts and to submit fully Subhanallah the ayat is so clear those leaders are kuffar because the alliance with the kuffar from the Jews and the Christians and the Mushrikeen and the Hindus against Muslims and help them and support them and make them itself got upper hand in the Muslim land and alliance with them and make tawalli with them and Allah says clearly in the chapter of Al-Ma'idah verse 51 وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ or with alliance with them, help them, support them, he's one of them Therefore, all those agreements and the treaties to support them by wealth and by money and let them itself got upper hand over the Muslim land to attack the Muslims and the Mujahideen, that is clearly is muzahara and muwalat for the kuffar against Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated clearly in chapter of Al-Hashr verse 11, أعوذ بالله من شيطان الرجيم ألم ترى إلى الذين نافقوا يقولون لإخوانهم الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب لئن أخرجتم لنخرجن معكم وَلَا نُطِيعُ فِيكُمْ أَحَدًا أَبَدًا وَإِنْ قُوتِلْتُمْ لَنَنْصُرَنَّكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاتِبُمْ That clearly what they say. See those who are munafiqeen, those who are hypocrites, they say their own brothers, those who are kafir from people of the books, if you come out, we will come out with you. And we will never obey anybody against you. And if you have been fought against you, we will support you. And Allah testified they are liars. And we see how those rulers, they said that to the kuffar and to the American. And they said to the American, we are with you. And they rise and start to fight against Ahl Tawheed and the ulama and the mujahideen. Arrest them, torture them and harm them. And even using some of their own preachers and unfortunately some of the learned person. And they declare their own love to the kuffar. And they declare their own love to the, to the mushrik. Practically, when they declare that in many of their own media, publicly, openly, that Allah says in the chapter of Al-Mujadala, verse 22, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاط الله ورسوله ولو كان وآباهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم. You will never find people believing in Allah. And the hereafter, they love those who disobey, those who rejecting, those who are at war with Allah and the messengers, even if they are their own parents, fathers and sons and brothers and sisters of their own tribes. Those who are al kuffar simply, they permit what is forbidden. And they make istihlal, whether verbally or physically, whether istihlal by, by word or istihlal by their own actions. And they protect even what they legislate, from, from matter which is prohibited. Every single haram existing in Muslims country, every single haram has been codified and legislated, has been put as a constitution, as a law and order. The institutions of riba and interest in all Muslims country, included in Arabia, you can see the, Saudi, the American Saudi bank, the British Saudi bank, the Holland Saudi Bank, all those banks I was living in Saudi Arabia for eight years, they giving interest and riba and codified in the main. You see the Chamber of Commerce in Saudi Arabia, those institutions are legal financial institutions to be exist. And the chapter of October verse 37, Allah says, إِنَّمَا النَّسِيءُ زِيَادَةٌ فِي الْكُفْرِ Verily, the riba of trade, it is what? It is more kufr. يضل به يضل 
به الذين كفروا they will be misguided you know with it those who are kafir they want to misguide with it allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhillunahu aman wa yuharrimunahu ana aman liyuwati'u iddata ma harrama allah fa yuhillu ma harrama allah zuyyina lahum su'u a'malihim wallahu la yahdi alqawm alkafirin this is ayah so clearly okay that is those who violate you see the sanctity uh, of the sacred month allah said that is indeed it is an addition to the kufr why because simply they say it to those kafir so they start to permit it one year and forbid it other you see they start to play with the dates and that is very nice story inshallah we'll make topic about it what the ayah said they permit what allah forbid and the shaitan does it for them their own bad deed and they said to you what we can do that is international banking system international law and order we can't do anything about it even we can see people mocking those rulers are really mocking the deen and supporting those who mock the deen and legislate law and order for those who mock the deen and Allah says in chapter of October verse 65 A'udhu Billahi Mishatan Rajeem Ulla Billahi wa ayatihi wa rasoolihi kuntum tastahzi'oon la ta'tazeru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum say by Allah and his verses and the messengers you are really laughing and mocking don't make excuses you commit kufr after you was mu'min that is really in summary the nawaqid and the kufr of those rulers and many other really evidences you can refer to my dear ex muslim brothers lahjus salaf which we believe on that we should not rise against the rulers who implement islam even if they do injustice and listen and obey to them even if they take your wealth and money as long as they implement islam and did not declare any kufr bawah and those existing rulers today subhanallah all of them they have been declared different type of kufr bawah and in each country there's different form of kufr bawah but all of them aligns with the kuffar and with the so-called war against terrorism aligns with the americans jews christian hindus and fire worshippers against ahlul tawhid against those who want to establish the sharia against the ulama of the haq may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us see a day with those existing rulers and let us see the mujahideen and the du'at and the muwahideen and the ulama of the haq who follow nahj salaf rise again and implement islam and let the tawhid and the sharia of islam prevail and become the highest as the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated clearly al islam ya'lu wa la yu'la islam always must be the highest and should be no but nothing it's a very higher than islam i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the muslim ummah will rise again and implement islam and the promise of allah will be fulfilled inshallah and they see inna ma tu'adun la sadiq verily what allah promised you is the truth inshallah we will see that and let the whole world remember that is islam is the supreme and then islam inshallah is the futures of the people inshallah wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin